Hello, we're back in episode 49. I said we'd be talking about the Invader port to the Super Nintendo, otherwise known as the Super Famicom in Japan. In C, using the PV SNES library by Alec Mall and Visual Studio Code for editing. Here are my background graphics. The font I used and my sprites. I used BRR tools found here to convert the wave samples to something compatible that the library could play. When I first installed the library and set up VS Code to build for the SNES, it worked great, but when setting up another development environment, I somehow messed it up and could no longer compile my project. But the guys over at PV SNES Live Discord channel, including Alec, were incredibly helpful in helping me troubleshoot the problem and get me up and running again. So let's compile it and show it running in the SNES 9X emulator. First we'll do a make clean just in case we needed to update any of our graphics etc. Then we'll do a make. It generates this dot SFC file among other things including converting our graphics into something that the library can display. Now we'll just drag the SFC file onto our emulator. As you can see, I've created a scrolling background like the one for the Genesis Mega Drive version. I have a little reverb in the sound effects as I didn't fully understand the parameters when converting my WAV files with BRR tools. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And there you have it. Okay, now we're going to take a look at it on real hardware. Here's my little SD card in here. It has Invader on it for the Super Nintendo. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in and power it up. And we'll select our game. And here is Invader. I decided to show a full version of Invader that I wrote in Raylib in C for the PC. So we'll go ahead. This is this is what all the code looks like. And we'll go ahead and run it. And so we've got a little attract screen here and a scoring legend and also my high score which is currently showing 2000. So I'll go ahead and hit start and you'll see I have all the invaders out there, all the sound, we have our UFO for 150 points. Now you'll notice after I hit so many invaders it will start to speed up. Also I can destroy 
the turrets from the bottom. If they're hit four times, the, the bottom half is destroyed, and then they can also be destroyed from the top. Now, if I'm going to beat my high score of 2,000, I better get going here. Uh-oh. Lost a, lost a bunker. finish the level. So it resets. Let's see if we can beat our high score of 2,000 points. Uh, apparently not. So if I do restart it, you'll see that my high score is still 2,000 points. Anyhow, this is a fully playable invader with levels and a point system and uh, destroyable bunkers, the UFO, all done in Raylib in C using the Raylib library. I wanted to show you the three books that I read cover to cover to basically learn C so that I could uh, create that version of uh, Space Invaders in Raylib. So I use the uh, C programming for abs or Absolute Beginner's Guide. Great book. Also the C programming in Easy Steps and um, this one from Raspberry Pi Press, the introduction to C and GUI programming. These are all great books if you're learning, if you're um, looking to learn C. So next episode, I'm not actually sure which version or for what platform I will be making Invader for. I do have an Unreal Engine version in the works, but uh, it's going kind of slow, so I'm not sure if that's going to be the next version. Also, I created an executable that I will leave a link to so people can play. Um, it, you can see the folder structure here, but I'll zip it up and uh, put it in a Dropbox. Anyhow, if you take the high score and delete it and save it, and delete the uh, information that's in there, when you run the file, you'll get this high score of a negative one. Um, as soon as you play the game and die the first time, you'll have a new high score from that point on. So I'll show you what that looks like. So now if I restart it, you'll see I have a high score of 180 points, which is what I scored in that last game. So anyhow, I'd love to get some feedback on this. Um, sorry for the small um, window size. Um, when I started it, um, I decided to make it at, uh, I believe it's 512 by 512, and I probably should have made it bigger. But uh, it, it worked out pretty well, so let me know what you think. That about wraps up episode 50 of my journey in game programming. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments or suggestions you may have that could make these a better experience. Until then, bye. I'll talk to you next time.